In this lesson, you will learn to prove that linear functions grow by equal differences over equal intervals by showing algebraically that the difference does not depend on the particular x-coordinates involved. You already know that linear functions are equations of the form y equals mx plus b and that their graphs are straight lines. Here's a typical linear function. Suppose we take an interval on the x-axis whose length is 4. If we project upward and find the points on the line above 2 and 6, and then project sideways to the y-axis to find the heights of those points, we see in this case that those heights are 3 and 5, and that the difference between them is 2. Notice that if we take another interval of length 4, such as the one from 8 to 12, project upward to the line, and project sideways to the y-axis to find the heights, we get heights of 6 and 8, which also have a difference of 2. In this lesson, we can prove that equal intervals will produce height differences that are equal on a linear function. This is true not only for the particular line we were just looking at, but for any line, and not only for intervals of length 4, but for any interval length. Here's a typical linear function. Notice we're assuming that the slope is positive, but you could do the proof with just minor changes assuming that the slope is negative. Let's take an interval and say that its length is k. Let's call the x-coordinate of the lower endpoint of the interval w. Since the interval is k units long, the upper endpoint would be w plus k. We project sideways to measure the heights of those two points. We know the heights based on the fact that the ordered pairs on the line need to satisfy the equation y equals mx plus b. So for the lower of the two points, we plug w in for x, and we find that y is equal to mw plus b. Similarly, we plug w plus k in, and the question is, how long is the difference between these two heights? To determine that, we need to do a little bit of algebra. Let's subtract the smaller of the two numbers from the larger of the two. First distribute the m. We can remove the first parentheses. And when we remove the second parentheses, we need to distribute the negative sign, negative mw minus b. Note that these terms add up to 0, and these terms add up to 0. So the difference simplifies to simply mk. That means that the difference in heights is mk. Notice in particular that that difference, mk, does not involve w. It depends only on m, the slope of the line, and k, the length of the interval. Therefore, we can conclude that any time we have a slope of m and an interval length of k, the difference in the y-coordinates will be mk, regardless of what w is. Here's an example involving a particular line. Imagine the x-axis. Imagine w and w plus 5. If we go up to the line, this is going to be 3w plus 2, and this is going to be 3 times w plus 5 plus 2. I obtained both of those values by plugging w and w plus 5 in for x in the lines equation. We subtract these two y-coordinates. Distribute. These two terms and these two terms add up to 0. And we get just 15. So regardless of w, regardless of the particular x-coordinate, as long as the difference between the x-coordinates of the points on the line is 5, the difference between the y-coordinates corresponding to them will be 15. Now you know how to prove that linear functions grow by equal differences over equal intervals.